my friends, my name is Ryan Freeman and I have a book review, but it's not just the book review, it is also, it is also a little bit about my life because what I read from Jean-Jacques Rousseau, the very famous French philosopher from the 18th century who had a profound impact on the French Revolution, who influenced great writers and thinkers such as Goethe, as well as many, many others. This guy, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and I'm going to say his name many times because he has one of those names that is just a pleasure to pronounce. Uh, this guy had a profound influence. I, I read that he was that he was responsible for breastfeeding to come back in vogue, uh, that very influential people um, adored him and followed him through various parts of time. Uh, and also he was very unpopular. He was a very, he was, he was a, he was a, a character, a, per, a character really, a real character. That's one of the reasons why I really love Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Uh, that um, that many people liked and many people did not like. Many people might agree with his philosophy. Many people would just think he's an idiot or a moron, um, or maybe not an idiot or a moron, but just way off. I'm not gonna comment on all of his philosophy because I simply haven't read it. Several years ago, I decided to get into philosophy and try to like build up my education and just sort of have a wide survey as, uh, or just a foray, I should say, into philosophy. And I heard about Rousseau from many people, um, uh, modern philosophers, and I just heard the name again and again. And when I found uh, some of his works, I picked them up and I read some of his influential essays that sort of put him on the map. Then I read the last book that he didn't actually finish um, but that was published posthumously, posthumously after he died, the Reveries of a Solitary Walker. And when I when I read his his essay, so I'm sorry if if this if this is just sort of a ramble, but I'm but I just wanna I just wanna I just wanna express this book review with feeling because Jean Jacques Rousseau it was. There's a lot of philosophers with feelings, but sometimes when you think of philosophy, it's like this cold analytical rationalism, this logic uh, that you get. Um, and there are some philosophers like Nietzsche that have tons of feeling. I mean, you feel like you're dancing on the precipice of chaos and order. And with Jean-Jacques Rousseau, I had so much feeling and so much life in his words. Whether or not he was right or wrong, whether or not he was telling the truth or, or, or an exaggeration, I just was enraptured in his reveries and in his stories and in his thinking. Um, his essay on on the, like, on the natural man uh, and, and all of that. I just, I don't even know how, how correct it is, uh, but I don't really care. I just really enjoyed reading it. Um, and a lot of his feelings, a lot of his intuitions, I quite agreed with. You know, some, and you might be one of those people out there who, who doesn't, you know, we have different temperaments. And one of my favorite philosophers of the 20th century, Alan Watts, once said that philosophy is largely a matter of temperament because we have different temperaments. Some of us are very precise. Some of us are a little gooey. And uh, Rousseau is one of those gooey guys. You get a lot of feeling. At least that's my take on it in any case. Uh, so the Confessions of Jean-Jacques Rousseau is his autobiographical work where he starts at the beginning of his story and then it leads all the way up until when he stopped writing it, I believe he was in his 50s, and I believe he died in his 60s. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, um, but it is a gripping story. It is a gripping story. I mean, he, he, his mother died basically by giving birth to him. He had this. He had he had a father who was seemed like a good father, uh, but he had some troubles uh, and had to be like exiled from his city. And Rousseau was raised by all of these different characters until he was thrust out onto the world stage, and he just sort of wandered as a 
bit of a vagabond, opportunist, adventurer. And one of the reasons perhaps that I like him is that in my own life, I didn't have quite the hard start that he did. Nothing near it. But in my youth, uh, in my early 20s and mid 20s, I did a lot of vagabonding, a lot of wild imaginings that maybe didn't come true, but led me on great adventures like Rousseau's story. Um, his, and, and throughout the confessions, you will get lots of pieces of his philosophy. And perhaps it's, if you are interested in his more philosophical treatises, treaties, essays, books, um, then you, the confessions might be a mandatory reading because you will understand the man himself and how his thoughts, how his feelings, how his outlook on life came to him. Uh, Rousseau uh, is, is often described as somewhat paranoid because l as he gets into his fame, because he eventually does, Rousseau is a man who is going from misadventure to misadventure throughout his youth. I mean, he, he, he talks quite frankly about his sins, about his problems, about the people he meets, about his feelings. And that is actually one of the things that makes this book a bit of a landmark in the whole story of autobiography. There were a few autobiographies before Rousseau, but Rousseau um, is, so, is credited with being perhaps the first modern autobiographer where he really gets into his inner feelings and thought, thought processes as he's going throughout these various stages of his life. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's like getting to know someone very well. Now, of course, this is the story that he's telling himself and he's trying his best to convince you that he is being honest and forthright. And he's constantly pointing out that, see, I haven't told you just about my virtues. I've told you about my vices. And when it comes to vices, he talks about his problems with masturbation. He talks about a problem when he was young and he got spanked by someone or paddled by someone and he developed a bit of a masochistic sexual uh, desire and would try to navigate people into those scenarios. I mean, and, and, and he's not, he's trying, he's, he's, saying, he, he, he's saying, this is nothing to judge. This is something to say, this is the man. I want to reveal my soul to you. That's what he's attempting to do. He may be perhaps by writing this, he is, he, is, um, he is revealing his soul to himself and now he's sharing it with you. And there are so many beautiful moments where you will just fall in love with this man, the way that he approaches situations and people and friendship. But then there are some hard parts um, where you're like, oh my God. There are so many hard moments where you will, you will say to yourself, Jean Rock Jacques Rousseau, two pages ago I loved you, but now I hate you because you are seeing something that is so shocking, that is so counter to our morals and mores, and probably counter to the morals and mores of many, many generations. Things that no one today, no author would dare say because they might get arrested. Like, him and I, I don't even want to say it. It's so shocking. Um, but there was one segment where him and his friend purchased a young girl to raise her for their pleasures in the future, which they both ended up not, according to Jean-Jacques Rousseau, not, not, they both developed fatherly feelings and tendencies towards her. So they ended up letting her go. But there, there are just so many, there are some very shocking moments. Like he says he has like five children and he gives them all up to a foundling hospital based on some very platonic virtues, <laughs> uh, which he comes to regret. It's his big regret. And then you read on Wikipedia that there's some authors who say that, that he never had children because so-and-so said he wasn't able to. And there's a lot of controversy surrounding him, but regardless, it is a fantastic tale. It is a fantastic read uh, into the mind of one of the most influential French philosophers who had a huge impact on our history, 
uh, really, really on European thought, on many other huge thinkers who had huge impacts uh, all around us. So I, I feel that it is a great read and I, it was a very entertaining read and I've been reading it for the past several, like two to three months. It's taken me quite a while to get through. I really, really enjoyed it. So I recommend it to you. And the reflections that I have for my own life is that in, as Jean-Jacques Rousseau becomes known for his writings and as he, Jean, he is set, he's a very idealistic man. He wants he wants to oh he wants to say the truth and he's constantly fighting against his tendency to make people love him so he's like i'm going to say the truth because i need i cannot lie i cannot hide how i feel but he also does have this urge to make people love him and but he has to tell the truth and he's getting himself into trouble because he's saying what he feels. He's saying what he thinks uh, in many cases. And it's not always popular and it's somewhat revolutionary. And I, you kind of get the sense that he kind of likes that also, even though he, he, he always stands on the moral high ground. Uh, there's a bit of a feeling that he's tooting his own horn, but whatever the case, there is something to admire about someone who says what they really feel, what they really think, even if it's counter to public opinion, even if it will get them in hot water. And I have recently, um, I know some of you guys probably only watch my book reviews, some of you might watch my life, but I am someone who has a small YouTube following and haven't had a lot of blowback from it, except that recently I have, I have, since I moved to Taiwan, had some heat thrown at me, had my life altered in ways because of stuff that I had posted online. And it's made me reflect, how do I wanna go forward with this YouTube project? Do I want to play it safe and not rock the boat so that I don't have any drama coming my way? Or do I wanna continue being as truthful, as truthful as I am, saying what I really feel, saying what I really think? And Jean-Jacques Rousseau was food for thought and food for the soul and, and an encouragement for anyone out there who wants to be themselves despite the repercussions because whatever happens to me in this modern 21st century, it's nothing compared to what happened to him. I mean, he literally was uh, had an arrest warrant put out for some of the stuff he wrote. And luckily, um, that's not going to happen. I may have to move cities and who knows, may move countries. Uh, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Um, but, it, but reading his confessions during a time where I was literally going through turmoil of having to move cities because of what I was talking about, much as Jean-Jacques Rousseau had to move towns many times in his life and lose friends, just like I just recently lost... I didn't lose friends, but I moved away from friends and I had to say goodbye to a lot of people because of stuff that I was talking about on YouTube. Jean-Jacques Rousseau went through all of this. So it was very um, serendipitous that I was reading him during this time. Um, so I just thought I would share uh, this wonderful book, The Confessions of Jean-Jacques Rousseau with you, a man who had a profound impact on us that has, but whether or not you agree with him, disagree with his philosophy, uh, if you like to get inside, if you want to know someone deeply from the inside and hear how they feel, hear how they think, and sometimes you're going to shake your head at them, at their actions, but it's honest and I can appreciate that. And I hope you appreciate this book review. Give me a thumbs up. My name is Ryan. Thank you. Bye-bye.